Blog Talk Radio. Hello, everyone. Good evening. Welcome to the Teresita Glasgow Blog Talk Radio Show. I'm your host, Teresita Glasgow. You know, God has graced me to be a leader of an organization in his season, Inc., and through that organization, I've come into contact and networked with some high net worth individuals and leaders. Some are Christian and some are not, but all of them have one thing in common, and that is a desire to see their visions come to pass. Our guest today is indeed a visionary. Dr. Robert Watkins is the founder of Kings and Priests Unlimited, He is the CEO of Conquer Worldwide LLC and Conquer Consulting. Robert holds an honorary doctorate in business and theology. He is the author of several best-selling books and programs. Robert is a much sought-after speaker and minister, and I'd be remiss if I didn't add that he's a dedicated husband and a proud father. Robert, how are you today, and welcome to the show. Oh, thank you so much uh, for having me. I, it's an honor and a privilege to be in his season. <laughs> Thanks for using that yes. name like that. <laughs> I appreciate it. <laughs> you know, Absolutely. In, mm-hmm. Let me ask you, in these tough economic times, how difficult is it for people to pursue the visions that they may have? Well, it's not it's it's difficult but not impossible. You know, for many of us, the only uh, the only way for us to excel in our visions is through entrepreneurship. You know, the, the jobs are meager and, and health care is expensive and, and life is, just, is expensive itself. And so we really have to be creative and be innovative to get the resources that we need. You know, most banks wasn't leaning to me even before the, the recession. <laughs> so the best way to get things done is really outside of the system. And hopefully we'll talk about some of those things tonight. Sure. Um, You know, you touched on something that's near and dear to my heart as I try to uh, go from being an employee with an employee mindset to an entrepreneurial mindset, which is a a whole different uh, element. I mean, it's so different. It's so different. Can you talk a little bit about that? I mean, I, I believe at one point you were an employee and then you crossed the great divide into entrepreneurship. And what was that like? Oh, well, making that transition is is always difficult, and it really starts with your mindset because we all were trained from the time that we can remember. Your parents, my parents said, go to school, good, good grades, so you can get into a quote-unquote good college, so you can get a quote-unquote good job. And we were programmed for that. Even in, in, in high school, we were programmed as that, you know, everything you do now is, is for a good job in the future. And then in college, we spent three and four years. I spent, you know, eight years, you know, in advanced studies, all for one thing, and that is to get a good job. Essentially, they were programming us to make someone else rich. And so now with that, since we've been programmed, some of us, 20, 30, 40, 50 years. So when you're now you're 40 and you're 50 years old, and you're like, my gosh, this good job has either gone away or is no longer inspiring to me. Uh, what do I do now? And that this good job is gone or it's, it's, it's a dead end job. Well, the first place we have to start is, is making the transition in our mind from a, an employee mindset to an, an employer mindset or from an employee mindset to an entrepreneur mindset. And that's where it starts, with that mindset. If you lose it right there, then we can't even go any further. Yeah, I have a good friend who says, uh, use his job as an acronym, just over broke. So, yes. uh, <laughs> so I understand what you, what you mean about that. And then the changing times, the current economic trends and job loss and industry shifts. I mean, when we look at places like Detroit, who used to have a booming automobile industry where now it's uh, almost, uh, you know, not quite a ghost town, but certainly a lot of jobs have been lost there. And we see that trend across the United States. Now, we're Christians, and we're talking about uh, a kingdom economy here. So we're talking about, as Christians, where is our responsibility to God? Now, absolutely, our 
job place is also a ministry workplace. But how important do you think it is for us to begin to look at things differently and think about things more on an entrepreneurial side or more on a business ownership side related to the kingdom of God? Uh, the great question, and you know, I grew up in Detroit, and my father worked 30 years uh, on the assembly line for Ford Motor Company. I grew up in a little town called Monroe, Michigan, and that job it fed us, it clothed us, it it kept us in a in a in a, in a nice home, um, and that job, but the plant closed. And now that plan has gone away from Monroe, Michigan. And so all the union jobs that were there, thousands of families have been affected. And so now those people, that job is never, ever going to come back. Some of those jobs were making $15, $20, $25 an hour on the assembly line. That job has gone away. And so what we have to do is we have to ensure that you have a revelation that, okay, that job was not my purpose. I have a purpose from God that I was born with, that I was equipped with. And the people who understand uh, that they have a purpose from God, once you understand that that is a fact, it's the truth, the second thing you need to do now is, is put your life on a mission to discover what that purpose is. Because within that purpose is where your passion is. You're already equipped. You don't have to go back to school uh, for this purpose because the people who walk in their purpose, the world make rooms for the the relationships will show up. Money shows up for people who are in their purpose. People who walk in their purpose uh, and they start businesses around that purpose, it, w it's, it won't feel like a job. What I do every day, it doesn't feel like a job. It's a joy to do what I do. I, I could work 24 hours a day if I didn't have a family. But it's not a job. It's a joy because it's, it's what I was born to do. And so as an adult, as you're 30 or 40 or 50 or 60 years old, and now you, you have to figure out, okay, what has God called me to do? What have I been born to do? And the first place to start in, in answering that question is, well, what problem have I been called to solve? And, and we can talk about some of those things. But the, from a kingdom mindset, I have to understand that I, I was not created to be a salesman or an accountant or a janitor or a school teacher. I've been created for a higher purpose, and we've got to focus on that even though some of those uh, skills, talents, and abilities may come into play, but rather than being a janitor, own the janitorial service. There you go. Okay. There you go. All right. And because rather God than has being, called us. Mm -hmm. Rather than being a teacher, have, have the school. Or even, even better than that, uh, shift the thoughts of the, of the public towards your way of mm -hmm. thinking. I know I, right now I'm reading a book, and uh, it's um, by Seth Godin, and um, it, it's really an interesting book, and the more I read it, I'm saying, wow, this, you know, he's really got a point here in some of the things that he's saying. And uh, he's talking about uh, we, we need you in leadership to be part of this tribe and the way that uh, things have changed. Uh, not so much now is uh, uh, top-down leadership as more more bottom-up leadership. And uh, the way people are buying in now is a little bit different than the way that they did before. And a lot of that has been fueled by social media. You know, it's just a new day. People are mm -hmm. thinking about things differently and how we need to um, – think about things differently and, and build our, our tribe. I know in social media we say build your list, you know. Um, mm -hmm. And where do you see, I know as I interact with the body of Christ, sometimes I wonder if we're not uh, maybe a tad slow in catching on to some of the uh, social media things. And uh, do you think that that is maybe uh, because of the philosophical no, uh notions that we have about what Christianity is and how involved we become in the culture? Well, one of the saddest scriptures in the Bible, as in the book of Luke, when Jesus said that the children of this world are wiser than the children of God. And what that's saying is, and here's what I believe. I believe that everything in this world has been created for the people of God to take advantage of. It's been created for God, for his people. So I don't care who, who came up with Facebook or Twitter or LinkedIn or Dig or any of these social media. My objective is to use that technology to touch millions of people. You know, I looked at my calendar, and I just wrote a new book called Never Chase a Paycheck Again. 
a uh, little shameless plug here, but it'll be out here in, 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 the, in the next month. And we looked at it, and we looked at my schedule, and I looked at all these cities that I was going to speak and, and preach and, 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 and do book signings and things of that nature. We said, man, I got two little girls. I, I don't want to be away from home that much, but I do have responsibility to get the book into as many people's hands as possible. Well, we came up with a whole plan to take advantage of the social media. Now I can be right here at home in my home office and Skype and talk to millions of people. I can use I can use webinars. I can go on Facebook. You know, there's now Facebook has a feature now where you can you can have video chats live with I can be in one place and I can talk to literally hundreds of people, in some cases thousands of people at a time. And so I believe God has put all those things in place for us. And so the children of light and the people of God, we've got to be more forceful in using technology in 2010 and beyond because if we don't, we know who will, and that is, that is the children of darkness, pornography, which is a $72 billion industry. I mean, they've got a whole strategy to take over all the social network uh, and all the social media. And so we've got to be just as vigilant with the gospel, just as vigilant with our businesses. And, you know, and quite frankly, when you talk about marketing and sales and presentations, the cheapest, most inexpensive way is to use technology. And so we've got to be just as smart as the world, if not smarter, to get our message out. Absolutely. I agree with you 100%. I absolutely agree with you. Now, one of your taglines that you use in your businesses, and I saw it and I said, wow, this is really great, and that is relationships, resources, results. Absolutely. Can you speak on that a little bit? Well, under relationships, relationships are everything to God. It's everything in business. Business is built on relationships. And what I always tell entrepreneurs, aspiring entrepreneurs, is that if you hang around nine broke people, guess who would be the tenth one? (laughs) You will be. I can judge your business. I can judge your vision based on the people that are around you. Now, in churches, unfortunately, we have a lot of incompetence in, in leadership. And that's why some churches remain small. And in business, if you just hang around people who are just uh, mediocre in what they do, well, your company is going to be mediocre. You see, when you're in business, you don't need to be a guru in everything. You just need to have a relationship who is a guru in that particular thing. So if you're weak in marketing, just get a relationship with someone who's strong in marketing. If you need someone who's strong in sales, get that person to come on board to your company. You don't have to pay them a whole lot of money. Give them some stock in your company. But relationships are everything. You take away the relationship, you really have no business. And then resources. Obviously, we've got to garner resources. Resources is more than just money. It's capital. It's your time. And so we've got to do those things to make sure that uh, you know we move forward. Without relationships and resources, your results are going to be very, very meager. And so what we do in our in our uh, ministry in Kings and Priests, we provide relationships and resources so that God's people can get results in their business. Mm-hmm. That's excellent. That's excellent. You know, when I was um, doing my review of, you know, all of your materials and everything, which you have a vast amount of materials out there, and why don't you give everyone <laughs> your, um, your, um, web, your website addresses now so that they'll, they can always go and look for themselves, if you can give them the website address for you? Sure. If they will go to Conquer Worldwide, that's C-O-N-Q-U-E-R, worldwide.com. And you're right, there's thousands of... Uh, uh, videos and articles out there. It's all designed to help equip and bring resources to God's entrepreneurs. Everything is based on the Word of God, and everything is helped to empower these people to ensure that, hey, look, you know, Bank of America not lending money. You know, there's other ways to get it done. Mm-hmm. But uh, while COVID is not lending money, there's other ways to get it done. And so there is money out there. Money didn't disappear. It's, it's, right. in, it's in his pockets, and you just have to go out there and know where to go. And so we help people to uh, get in a position to get the money that they need to succeed. Yeah, a- absolutely. And I, I think that some of the other materials that I ran across, across kind of uh, let me see that you also kind of you, you do some consulting, and um, mm-hmm. I'm thinking that your consulting is probably to help them change that mindset. I know one of the things that can come up when you're really trying to get from the mindset of being an employee to an entrepreneur or, as you said before, an employer, 
which took it another step for me as an employer. Okay, yeah. Okay. <laughs> um, is that that mindset, and you can't do that alone. You actually need someone to coach you through that, and you have a coaching arm, and I think that that's, that's phenomenal. I know I attended one of your um, one of your wives' uh, uh, sessions, one of your wives' sessions. Oh, um, yeah. Good. And uh, she said something, and I had to come back home. I mean, it, it was in, it stayed in my mind all that day. Came back home, and I, ha- I have a coach of my own, you know, and uh, and I had to mm-hmm. call her and run through that with her. And uh, it's those kind of thought-provoking suggestions and things that are said to you during a, co- a coaching session that may break you out of a certain mindset or have you uh, not be stopped by fear and other things, mm-hmm. other, um, di- other distractions that can get in your way. Because mm-hmm. if once you go into a, once you go into an entrepreneurial thought uh, and try to change things, everything in the world is going to come up that's going to try to force you not to change things. It's the old status quo, you know. Even family mm-hmm. and friends, you know, what are you doing? You know, you need to be doing this. <laughs> you know, your your mind, your heart, your spirit, everything that the Lord is saying to you is saying one thing. But, you know, if the, that old status quo is going to come back up, you're always going to go to the place where you find the most comfort or the mm-hmm. sameness or the reassurance. So it is like a tugging and a pulling away from the norm. But a lot of things, uh, sometimes I think that what we as Christians don't realize is that we're not in the norm. We're right. actually in the ad norm, and we're trying to move to the norm. Right. You know, as entrepreneurs, as owners, as leaders, th- these are kingdom principles. These are things that we should be striving for. And once we cross over to where we're supposed to be, as you talked about a little bit with destiny and purpose, uh, it will become smooth after a while. I, I, absolutely. When we talk about mindset and, and the difficulties of people changing their mindset, because you're not going to change your life without, first of all, changing your mindset and then changing your relationships and thoroughly changing where you go. You, 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 you have to ensure that the first thing we have to do is get our minds off of our own problems. And so an entrepreneurial mindset will, first of all, figure out, well, how can I solve a problem for somebody else? How can I solve a problem for my neighbor, for my community? How can I solve a problem for my church? Uh, for my my friend, for my coworker, and and when you get your mind off of your own problems and on to solving someone else's problem, the opportunities are going to come very simple, very simply. They, they they're going to come. There's a lady here in Atlanta who owns a company called A Piece of Cake, and she reminded me of that that little woman in Second Kings chapter four, where her house had four clothes and the bank was coming to take her and her two sons, and Elijah came to her and he asked her. He said, what? He said, uh, you know, what do you have in your house? And she said, well, I just have, uh, you know, just some pots. He said, okay, well, you know something about pots. Well, we know the story. He, Elijah gave her a business strategy and went out and knocked on doors and bought pots in, and, and God set this little woman up in the gas and oil business. Well, the same thing with this lady who owns a company called a uh, piece of cake. Uh, she was really struggling financially. She had lost her husband. But, you know, she asked herself, well, what can I do to help other people? She said, well, I like to make other people smile. I like to make other people happy. Now, she had her own problems, but she was more concerned about other people. And she had an idea, which was to make cakes. And she realized that there are people like my wife who will spend, you know, 5 and $6 for a piece of cake. Now, I don't know how much a piece of cake costs, but it's not <laughs> 5 or $6. So long story short, she's figured out a way how to ship pieces of cakes all around the country, in some cases ten, eleven, twelve dollars for a piece of cake. Now she's a multi multi millionaire today from that. Now when a piece of cake comes in in our, in our home, now I have two daughters and you know, I think you heard this story before and, and they, they you know, they make up holidays now. They had a daddy is a ball headed day holiday. <laughs> Now, they just make up days just to get a piece of cake. But the point of the matter is she changed her mindset from feeling sorry for herself, for I'm just lonely on me, nothing's ever good going to happen to me. She got her mind off of her own problems, off, off to how can I make other people happy? How can I solve a problem for someone else? And the business idea came from something that was already in her life. 
And that's where we need to start. There's something that's already there. And that, from coaching and consulting and having the right relationships, we see things that maybe you can't see. Well, you, you see it, you just take it for granted. Right. And we use something very ordinary. You think about Walmart. They sell, they make billions off of selling very ordinary products mm-hmm. and services. Um, somebody's a billionaire right now from selling cotton balls. Right. Someone's a billionaire right now from selling hair. I mean, very, just something very simple. You know, God used, God says in the book of Proverbs that he uses simple things to confound the wise. And so, first of all, I'll just tell people to look for a problem to solve in someone else's life. And your mindset will follow. You know, it's amazing to me because one of the products that I always think about is the pet rock. You know, a rock with a face painted on it. You <laughs> yes. know, made, made millions. And it's, it's unbelievable sometimes. But you have to, you know, the Lord said he would give us witty inventions. And you have, mm-hmm. to, you have to believe that and, and pray for that and put, your, put yourself in the place where you're able to hear from him and to, like, download the information that he gives to you. And you're not able to do that if you're if you're in a stale mindset. So it really kind of goes back to your mindset and that renewing of the mind to not be mm-hmm. conformed to this world, but to be transformed by the renewing of the mind, and to come out of a lot of the uh, old ideologies about you know, especially you know, oh, to be poor is equated with being holy. You know, that that's a wrong mindset, and, and we know that, but. Mm-hmm. I think a lot of a lot of the church may still be caught up in that, and that's that's a that's a whole different radio show right there. But <laughs> <laughs> oh, absolutely, we need we need a part two. You know, the other thing is 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 our, how we relate to money. You know, money makes a terrible boss, but it makes a great employee. Mm-hmm. And so I I see money as just a tool, as someone who works for me. And, and and so we have to make sure that we have even the right mindset as it relates to money. Now, yes, as Christians, sometimes we can be so spiritual that we're no earthly good. We actually lose our salt because we're hanging around church so much. But m- majority of people in the church spend 70% of their waking hours working a job for someone else. Right. And so, so we have to take the information from the Word of God. And, and make it practical. And that's where coaching and consulting comes in. And what we do, we take the revelation you have of the Word of God and we make it practical in your life so that you can benefit from it. Okay. And, and Robert, you know, they're spending all those hours at someone else's job, and what makes it even sadder is they're not happy. They're right. not happy. Exactly. There. You know, they're miserable mm-hmm. there, but they stay there. And a lot of it is because they're not walking in their purpose. They're not walking in right. their purpose in, in God. And uh, once, you know, once they do get in their purpose, then they, the things will start to flow together more smoothly. Um, you know, and I think fear is an element that comes up. And, you know, we always quote that scripture, God has not given us a spirit of fear, but power and love and a sound mind. But we still operate on a lot of fear. And that mm-hmm. has, you know, you, um, you, you have to confront that. And because you can't, you can't conquer anything that you don't confront. And I think the coaching, uh, mm-hmm. the coaching helps with that a lot. Yes, well, it, it does. And coaching and consult—it's all about relationship. It's just having. I love being around people who intimidate me. I love being around people who are uh, greater than me, who have gone to have done more things than me, because that means that the problems that I'm having right now, somebody's already solved it, and so. If you're the smartest person in the room all the time, guess what? You're, you're not going to grow. Right. And so, so it, it, so it, it is important that you have uh, a, a good coach or a good consultant or someone who can walk with you, uh, even to help you develop a business plan. You know, many people try to succeed; they don't even have a business plan. You know, when people come to me with a business idea or something they want to do, I ask them two questions. Number one, what did, did God call you to do this? And number two, let me see your business plan. And if you stutter at both of those two life-changing questions, I can already tell you, you're setting yourself up to fail, and you're going to waste the next year, two, three, four years of your life. Did God call you? Did God tell you to do it? And do you have a plan? And so those are two very basic uh, things that every Christian in the marketplace needs to be able to answer and not stutter and be able to, to, to produce those two very vital pieces of information. 
Yeah, because as I heard one person say, we're poor because it's passed over opportunities repeatedly, which means yeah. that you don't have a plan, you don't have a plan, you don't have the relationships, you don't have the connections, or even the people who can speak, put that information, you know, in, in your life, you're not connected with. And a lot of times, uh, you know, we, we spend an enormous amount of time at church, and I love church, believe me. My, my Monday is not the same if I'm not there on Sunday. Um, but um, there are those times when we need to think of not so much church, Christianity, but kingdom as a whole. And mm-hmm. and line up with the kingdom and what God has given us for a purpose. What is our calling? What is the purpose that He's put us on the earth for? Because ultimately, we not only benefit ourselves in the kingdom, but we reach and touch other people and benefit them as well. Well, we need to define what the kingdom is because most preachers define the kingdom as church, and that is not the kingdom. Matter of fact, uh, Jesus only mentioned the word church two times in the New Testament, but he mentioned the kingdom of God 69 times in the New Testament. And so the kingdom is where God called you to be. It's where he called you to, to plant your business, to plant your ministry. That means you have dominion over that, that geography or over, that, over those people or over that land. So it's wherever God called you to be. And, and, and then Jesus said, lo, the kingdom of God is, is with you everywhere. And so it's wherever you go, that is the kingdom. And so, you know, when I'm at home, this is my kingdom. When I'm in my office, this is, that's my kingdom. So that means I am the impact. Whatever situation, wherever I go, there are people in jail right now that are born again. That is their kingdom. They are the impact that for the glory of God. And when you're in the marketplace, whether you are in widgets or manufacturing or services or consulting or limousine service, that you are to dominate and control that particular industry and the customers that God will call to be a part of it. So we need a very practical um, definition of what the kingdom is from an individual standpoint. Mm-hmm. We have two minutes remaining in the show. And this is Teresita Glasgow, and this is the Teresita Glasgow Blog Talk Radio Show. And I'm here with our guest today, Dr. Robert Watkins, and we're talking about a lot of different things that have to do with kingdom <laughs> and purpose and business, and it's, it's really a great show. Um, Robert, thank you so much for joining me today. I'd like you to give out your, um, your website again and uh, your, your new book, you can plug it again, mm-hmm. Robert, and <laughs> okay. any other information, contact information where our followers can uh, can connect with you and, and kings and priests and conquer. Yes, please. Visit my website at conquerworldwide.com. Loads of information there. You can get plugged into some other Christian businesses. And my new book, Never Chase a Paycheck Again, um, Life Powerful Lessons to Finance Your Life. Uh, It's going on sale in exactly 30 days. And also, we have our Kings and Priests meeting coming up on Tuesday, March 30th at the Cobb Galleria Center at 6.30 p.m. It's free. The table has been prepared. Everything has been paid for. I look forward to seeing you there. Excellent. Thank you so much for being here with us, Robert. Um, This is Teresita Glasgow. Thank you for tuning in to the show today. You may contact me by email at info at inhisseason.com. That's I-N-F-O at inhisseason, I-N-H-I-S-S-E-A-S-O-N.com. Please browse our website at inhisseason.com. And to learn more about me, to learn more about In His Season and what we do, and God bless you and keep you until we meet again. It has been an excellent show. Robert, is there anything else that you would like the uh, listeners to know as you go would you like to just leave them with one last gem sure absolutely turn tune in every time you can to end his season and and this has been a wonderful wonderful educational and empowering uh moment you are doing a fantastic job and i look forward to uh to tuning in uh next time we meet okay thank you robert and i'll see you because i will be attending (laughs) <laughs> On the 30th, I will be attending 
the uh, expanding God's kingdom meeting with King yes. Street, Tuesday, March 30th at the Cobb Galleria. I did attend their last show. I, I attend their last meeting, and believe me, the connections, the people that you meet, and the opportunities are there. So you're going to want to connect with Dr. Robert Watkins with Kings and Priests. Um, you know, don't miss those opportunities and connect with Kings and Priests. And once again, this has been the Teresita Glasgow Blog Talk Radio Show. Thank you for tuning in, and I'll see you next time. May God bless you and keep you till we meet again. God bless.